Welcome to Dodgers Daily. I'm Casey Porter. I'm so glad that you decided to tune in. We have a very, very, very special guest today. Today, right-handed pitcher, flamethrower in the Dodgers organization, Emmett Sheehan, joins Dodgers Daily. So, Emmett, I'm so excited about this, so thank you for joining. Thank you, Casey. I'm excited to be here. Okay, let's take you back to Salisbury, Connecticut, the Connecticut area. Ben Kasparius is a big name in that part of the country. I know he was a little bit older than you. He was the Gatorade Player of the Year, his senior year in Connecticut. You had to have heard of him. So did you get to face him? What did you know about Ben Kasparius your last two years there in Salisbury, Connecticut? Yeah, I uh, I knew about Ben from the time I was probably 13. He was always, you know, the best player in our area. So he was – everyone talked about him. Um, and I definitely knew who he was. I don't think he knew who I was, but – uh, yeah, I, I wasn't ever in his league. He went to the public school league in our uh, in our neighbor or our area, and I went to private school. So we never played against each other. But we had, we got a chance to play together in uh, the NECBL in 2020 in the COVID season. So that was great. That was when I met him, and I had a few mutual friends. So it was great to meet him. He has some really great stuff and a really great story. But, hey, you mentioned the NECBL, and, and that's the New England College Baseball League. You had a really good season there in 2020. You also went to Boston College and, and had a good career there. You, you entered the draft after your your third year there, your draft-eligible third year. So just kind of talk about the NECBL, the experience there, your experience at Boston College, why you chose to be an Eagle, and, and your whole collegiate career. Yeah, definitely. Um, BC was a perfect fit. My mom was adamant about going to a good school, and I was trying to go to a really good baseball school. Um, and they were actually my first offer at the time. So it was kind of a no-brainer. I took it right away, and uh, I was really happy I did. It was awesome. I love Boston College, and I learned a lot of great lessons in my three years there. So it was great. Yeah, and then the summer leagues uh, in New England are great. So I went to the Futures League before my freshman year, and then NECBL after that, and then the Futures League again. So I think that summer me and Ben played together was actually in the Futures League, but all those experiences were awesome because you had players from all over the country coming up to play around us, which was right in our backyard, so it was really easy, and it was it was great. Yeah, I, I have not really I, – I haven't dove into the, the Futures League much. Can you kind of expand on that? I'm not exactly sure what that is. Yeah, definitely. So the Futures League, uh, when I was in it first in 2018, was kind of a, a smaller league. Um for guys going into college like me or maybe older guys that were still trying to play. And then the NECBL was the big league at the time. And I think at this point, if I'm not mistaken, they kind of started switching teams. So a few teams from the Futures League went to the NECBL. A few teams from the NECBL went to the Futures League. And it kind of all evened out, I think. Um, And by that Futures League summer, I was with a, a ton of guys that wanted to play in the Cape but didn't have the opportunity to because it was canceled. So... It was awesome to see, you know, we had South Freelake, Cody Morissette from our Boston College team who were playing there. And it was it was great competition. It was really awesome to get that and be able to ramp up for that junior year, that draft year. So Yeah, Boston College, that campus you get on Chestnut Hill, that thing that just takes your breath away, doesn't it? Yeah, it's awesome. It's it was everything I could have hoped for in, in a school. So I was really happy with my decision to go there. Okay. Third year, you still have, I believe, if I have my math right, you still had two years left of eligibility at yeah. Boston College, but then you get drafted in the sixth round, and then it's by the Dodgers. So, man, I yeah. mean, you have a great situation at BC, but, boy, sixth round Dodgers, that had to have been really kind of a tough decision, didn't it? It was a little bit of a tough decision. I went into the draft kind of um, expecting to leave school. Uh, it wasn't really too much on my mind to go back. Uh, I was expecting to go a little higher in the draft, and then when the sixth round came – The Dodgers, uh, obviously, I heard a ton about their player development and how great of a team they were at developing pitchers. So that kind of sealed the deal for me, and I was definitely – I want to go be a Dodger for sure. So you heard all about the developmental list or or the development development system in the Dodgers organization. I'm sure you have not been disappointed. (laughs) Definitely not. Yeah, they've uh, they've helped me more than I can even uh, say. So it's it's really crazy how good they are at just – you know, finding what guys are good at and letting them do their thing, but also, you know, giving them stuff to to get them better at the same time and not overcrowding them with information. So it's been everything I could have hoped for. You know, guys like you that are up against the, the you know, you're getting a little bit older, you're in college, and then 2020 hit and you're, you're kind of thinking about the draft and college too. It was a really weird situation 
for you guys because it stunted a lot of momentum. It kind of left you out in the air of, hey, how am I going to get out there to be seen, to get drafted, and that kind of thing. And what I hear a lot from guys that were in your situation, that that time in 2020 when everything got shut down, it could either make you or it could have broke you, you know. And obviously you use that time to your advantage because when you came back that next year, and 2021, you were striking everybody out. So kind of talk about how you used that time in 2020 to your advantage. Yeah, so when I went home, um, I obviously, my sophomore, my sophomore season when we got shut down for COVID, I had a pretty bad year. I had a few starts that really just didn't go my way. And I came home and I was probably a little out of shape. I probably wasn't where I needed to be. So that was kind of like a, a wake-up call for me, especially seeing the draft that year happen kind of kicked me into gear. And I read, you know, David Goggins book really kind of changed my life at that point, because I started to really, you know, take pride in my work and doing it for me instead of, you know, just checking the boxes and making sure the coaches see me do the right things. I was doing it so that I knew I was getting better. And that gave me the confidence to go into the next season and, you know, pitch how I wanted to pitch. Yeah, no doubt about it. And then you move into your professional ranks. And I kind of want to fast forward to this past year and and you had a couple of bumpy starts early on, simply put. And then in June, it really seemed like like your second start somewhere around there in June. It really looked like you turned a corner right there at that point. From that point on, you really, man, you were just releasing the ball with conviction. Would that be accurate? And talk about that that time. Yeah, definitely. So I actually had a shoulder injury at the beginning of the year. Nothing okay. serious. It was just a, uh, you know, like a subscap, like a strain in my shoulder. So nothing too bad. But when I came back, it was – Kind of hard to get the feel for it again. Um, I only had one start before that happened in Great Lakes. And so the Dodgers, uh, a few of the coaches put together this awesome throwing program, which completely changed the way I was doing it, which was kind of getting me back to being athletic in my delivery. And after that, you know, I figured out some stuff with my arm slot. And then I had, you know, those three starts shut down for a week and kind of restarted and redid all that stuff. And it just changed the way my season was going. So I credit the, the Dodgers coaches with all that. Yeah, no doubt. And you mentioned making a few adjustments to your arm slot. You're kind of that three-quarter guy, so you get a lot of that that arm side run. And then also being the three-quarter guy with the high velo, you also get that ride too. So you have the best of all scenarios there, don't you? Yeah, definitely. I, I uh, worked on that this year. It wasn't really something that I was trying to do, but it was. It felt more comfortable to drop down a little bit and uh, not be you know way over the top, which is – some of the coaches have told me my whole career, which is stay north south, you know, stay right over the top. But I don't know. It always felt more comfortable to be a little lower than most guys. And I guess the way I throw now kind of helps my fastball play a little better. And it also helps me with my other pitches, you know, my changeup. It helps me get on top of it and get that good fading action. So that yeah. was definitely a big, a big point this year. Yeah. And as you went on, you're hitting 97 consistently and then you, you hit 99. So. You're looking for that zero, aren't you? <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. I mean, I thought it was going to be this year, but it didn't happen. So next year, got to do it. Man, how does it feel? You know, you're six foot five, so it's almost like you're just handing the ball off to the catcher. And you have this three-quarter slot that's moving back into a righty, and then it has all this velo to it. And you have to know, I mean, I, I know you're a very humble person, but standing there, that has to be a whole lot of fun with a whole lot of confidence knowing, you know what, I'm getting ready to throw this thing 97 at the top of the zone. It's getting ready to run in on your hands. Good luck. <laughs> yeah. No, there's no better feeling. It's it's awesome to have that confidence in your number one pitch and the pitch that everyone throws the most um, and kind of feel like I can use it as a pitch that I can work early in counts or work late in counts, try to put, put guys away with. Um, having that confidence is unreal. It's the best feeling on the mound as a pitcher. Yeah, so you're six foot five. Mentioned that a minute ago. Great extension. You know, the longer you are, the closer you release the ball to home plate. That's what extension is. So, so is that something that comes natural to you? Is that something that the Dodgers have worked with you with, or is that something that you consciously put to your advantage? It comes pretty naturally. I never really consciously think about you know getting further towards home plate. I think a lot of it might come from me sitting a little lower in my legs uh, in my delivery. But, yeah, no, that's not something that I really uh, consciously think about out there. It's just kind of a byproduct of my, my delivery. Okay, so the lower arm slot, we talked about the fastball, how that creates the, uh, I guess you could call it horizontal fade to your fastball, but it really creates a whole lot of that whenever you throw your changeup. So your changeup is going to end up just naturally being a plus pitch based on your arm slot. And I know you also have a slider. And then in the past you've thrown – 
a curveball, so I don't think you're quite throwing – I could be wrong, but I don't think you're throwing the curveball quite as much as you used yeah. to. But talk about your secondaries. Yeah, uh, my changeup's always been my best secondary. I was a changeup curveball guy in college, so – I was always comfortable throwing those two pitches, and I'd still say those are probably my two most comfortable secondaries to throw for strikes. Um, the slider went up, came a long way this year. It was kind of a slower pitch that didn't have too much bite to it early in the year, and then I, I got a new grip, and I was starting to throw it a little harder, which helped it play a lot better off my fastball. Um, but, yeah, the curveball I definitely still throw. I love throwing my curveball. It's just not really a, a big swing and miss pitch when it's, you know, high 70s. If it was – where I want it to be, which is where I'm trying to get it to low 80s, I think it could be a, a definitely a better swing and miss pitch. Maybe dump it in there for strike one, kind of a get me over type pitch right now. Is that how you use it? Definitely a strike one, or you know, if it's a three two count and the guy's looking yeah. heater or slider, then just freeze him with that. I think it's a great pitch to have just in your back pocket, uh, like a big change of pace, change of speeds. So, do you have a lot of confidence in your curveball as far as it being a strike pitch for you? Definitely, yeah. I think that's probably yeah. Change up and curveball, I can throw. I feel like I can throw for a strike whenever. Yep. Okay. You mentioned the grip just a minute ago, and I know that's a big deal as far as, you know, the way the ball moves. And moving up to double A, which you got to do, the, the ball, okay, I've heard it is way, way different. So how was that transition for you? Yeah, the ball's definitely different. Um, so I, that took a little bit of time to get used to. Um, I think the first week my stuff was all down a decent amount. And then as I went along every week, it started to get back to, you know, where it was in Great Lakes. Um, but, yeah, it's, it's just an adjustment. I know I'm going to have to do that. So we used the big league ball there. And if I can't throw that, then I'd, I know I wouldn't be able to throw it in the big league. So i got to be able to throw it. So. Yeah, I was talking to Lyle, and he, he was mentioning how his first bullpen with the double-A ball, he was like, okay, we got to get this figured out. Did you have that moment? Yeah, <laughs> yeah definitely. It's it's weird. You know, it's it's not like really the uh, the size of the seams or anything. It's the way the ball, I think, is packed. It's packed a yeah. little tighter. So it just feels a little different in your hand. But it's once you get used to it, it's not too bad. Yeah, you know, when we're in high school and we're in college, we always knew that you got swing and miss at the top of the zone, you know, but – the coaches always taught you to work down in the zone and get movement and all this, and for, and for good reason. But then you get in the pros, or you maybe even to, you know, your your latter years of college. Now that that some of the rap soda and track man machines are, are a little bit more common in these programs, and then you actually get all the data explained to you. So now, not only do you know, hey, if I throw a ninety seven mile an hour fastball, hey, a guy's liable to swing and miss. You you actually know why. So that explanation that you got once you became a Dodger, did that make a big difference for you? Absolutely. I mean, they kind of basically told me targeting fastballs down in the zone isn't really my thing, um, which is kind of what I learned my junior year at BC. I was always a guy that my miss with my fastball was up. So I got lucky with uh, at BC. It was just going up and kids would swing and miss at it. But now I actually know why that happens and why me with a lower slot, it might play a little better than a guy with a higher slot. Um, so, yeah, it gave me a lot of confidence to just let it rip at the top of the zone and not worry about you know, everyone always talks about the, the fastball up is what gets hit, but not really anymore, I don't think. Yeah, no doubt about it. Okay, you created a whole ton of momentum there with Great Lakes and then Tulsa as you left this last season, 2022. Well, you were absolutely on top of your game, and you carried that momentum into the Arizona Fall League, didn't you? Talk about that experience. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I was just so grateful and happy that the Dodgers picked me to send me to the Fall League and – uh Hey, that was a crazy opportunity to just, you know, get to face the best bats in a league that is known for hitting and not really known for pitching. So it's an extra challenge a little bit. And uh, I I really like that challenge. And I thought that it, it made me a lot better as a pitcher to be able to face those guys. Um, but, yeah, I think keeping that momentum going and just, you know, remembering all the things that we talked about and being at the Dodgers facility for, you know, our uh, fall league experience was just all stuff that played into why it, why it went pretty well. Yeah, I never put that actually into the equation. Being in the Arizona Fall League, you're right there next to the complex, aren't you? So you you have access to all the facilities and all the coaches, don't you? Yeah, our our home uh, facility was the Dodgers Major League side facility, so it was awesome. It was it was great. I got to be with all the guys, and you know, whenever I wanted to go to the minor league side or you know see any of the coaches, they were all there helping us. So. I don't know why, but I guess I just never put two and two together, how cool that is and how great of an experience that is to be in the Arizona Fall League for Dodgers players with their facility being right there. But, hey, one thing that I notice about you whenever you stand on the mound, and it's really enjoyable for me to watch, is that 
it just seems like that i don't know a chip on your shoulder may be a little bit too strong but you just seem to have that something to prove attitude every time you take the bump would that be accurate talk about that yeah definitely um that was something that i learned in college was you know i can never be timid on the mat i'm not the type of guy that just you know takes it easy and lets the game happen or whatever I'm, I got to be in attack mode at all times. And I kind of learned that my junior year, I had a really bad start at Louisville or a, a start of the game. I gave up like three in the first inning and then I came in and I, I got fired up and I was like, that's it. Like, I'm not letting up anymore this game. And I kind of just kept that mentality going through the rest of the season and it worked. So I just kind of kept it through the rest of my career so far. And uh, yeah, that's something that's helped me a lot. It's just, you know, trying to have a mental edge on guys and trying to, you know, it's not intimidation, but it's like I'm gonna I'm gonna come right at you. No doubt about it. You're a guy that's always looking for something to create momentum, and then once you get that momentum, man, <laughs> you just ride that sucker all the way home. But but hey, Emmett, I I can't thank you so much. I you know it, when I reached out, I was just so hoping that you would respond back because I just so enjoyed watching you know this past season and and your career there at Boston College and. And getting to talk to you has been a pleasure this afternoon. So, Emmett Sheehan, thank you so much for joining Dodgers Daily. Thank you so much. I mean, I've, I've been watching. I've been a big fan. So, it's, it's awesome to get on here. Thank you.